when somebody asks you what you are, you will say, well, I'm a human. But you say that because everybody agrees that what human represent. Oh, I'm energy, I'm light. But what is the truth? The truth is that you don't even know what you are. You know that you are, that's true. But do you really know what you are? Do you think you know what you are? I don't think so. So I think right now, this is an exciting time to be thinking about the relationship of mind and consciousness to quantum physics. Essentially, our soul is waves of light and color. Our soul is energy. Who are we? How did we get here? And what is this really all about? And it was only in the latter, in the last 35 years, that uh, consciousness and its uh, ramifications and its attributes has become a serious subject of scientific study. I would say that we are evolving into an intelligent species that has a true understanding of how interconnected everything is. Well, it turns out that 50 years ago, we couldn't even think of this as a strange idea. 30 years ago, you couldn't talk about it over the dinner table. But what's happening now? I have woken up in other people's bodies. Now that's really weird. Where I know I'm not in my own body. Where I'm looking through another person's eyes and looking out at the world that they see and it ain't me that I'm seeing. Something's missing here. And that's often what motivates people to go into what you might call a spiritual search or a search for deeper meaning in their lives. And what you're searching is for the real you, the authentic. Many groups of people have lost the belief structure that the soul has continuity and lives lifetime to lifetime and in between lifetimes. There's just enormous evidence that has been researched in some cases by skeptics and journalists about children who remember past lives in great detail and have they've been able to, to investigate and find out that what they're remembering is actually true. And all of a sudden I looked up and literally saw this bomb drop. And it came down like a giant mushroom cloud and the smoke just started barreling towards us. Everything around me was burning, was in flames. And I remember grabbing, I had a small child, and I grabbed this small child, and there was fire everywhere. And the only way to not burn, to be afflicted by the fire, was to get into this water. We were monks, and we lived in the same monastery. And he was more like my teacher. Well, death is the big unfocus. <laughs> Let it go. Uh, suddenly, uh, all of those things which were so important to you, almost your whole life, will, in a flash, be totally unimportant to you. It may take a couple of days, I don't know how long, before you finally recognize that you're not that body anymore, or you're not even concerned with the whole life and death drama of that lifetime. And then at that point, uh, various people from my life appeared at this table who were part of my soul group. We call our intuitive capabilities our sixth sense, and that's just dead wrong. They should be called our first sense. <laughs>